Okay, so we are looking at section 4.9, and our goal today on this is to be able to find polynomial models for given data. So all that means is we're going to be given the data points, and we want to be able to come up with the polynomial that would fit those data points. Uh, we also want to be able to use the models to find solutions to certain problems. Early in the year, we already talked about this concept. It's called finite differences. These are the differences of consecutive y values when the x values in the data are equally spaced. So here are some properties for these finite differences. If a polynomial function has degree n, then the nth differences of the function values for equally spaced x values will be non-zero and constant. Conversely, if the n differences of equally spaced data are non-zero and constant, then the data can be represented by a polynomial function of degree n. Let's take a look at this to see what it is we're talking about. Um, I'm just going to make a table of values, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, if I plug 0 in here, I'm going to get 3. If I plug in 1, I'm going to get 5. If I plug in 2, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11. Plug in 3, that's going to be 18, and 3 is 21. Because this is an even function, I know if I put negative 1 in, I get the same answer as if I put in positive 1. If I put in negative 2, same answer, and same thing for 3. All even functions have that. A positive and negative x have the same result. Now, what they want us to notice, though, is these finite differences that we have. So that's going to be negative 10. That's negative 6. That's negative 2, 2, 6, and 10. So this would be my first finite differences, and I do not have a constant there. Check the next one. To go from negative 10 to negative 6, that's 4. To go from negative 6 to 2, add 4, add 4, add 4, add 4. Notice all of those are com constant, and those are second differences. So the second differences are all equal, and that's because this is a polynomial with degree 2. In other words, it's a quadratic. So anytime that second set results in a constant, that means it has to be a quadratic. If the first distance differences in, ended up being a constant, we would have a linear function. Third would mean cubic, fourth would mean quartic, five quintic, etc. Okay, so this says to write a cubic function whose graph, whose graph passes through the given points. Now, this isn't really related to this. This is one of these where we're trying to come up with the, um, the polynomial function for this. I have to look at x-intercepts. I have an x-intercept at negative 1. As a factor, then, that had to be x plus 1. It's going through that point, so it's only a solution once. Then I also have a 0 at 1, 0. That is actually a bounce. And when that happens like that, that's actually going to be a solution twice. Now, this would be a polynomial function, but I don't know what this a value is. How could I find that a value? Do I another, know another point on the graph? Yeah, 2, 3. So if I want to find out what this coefficient is of the function, I just plug in this point that is not an x-intercept. So I'm going to have to plug in 3 for y, a I don't know, 2 for x, 2 for x again, and so I'm going to have 3 equals a times 3 times 1 squared, so I get 3a equals 3, a equals 1. So now I know that the equation is just going to be this right here. And if I wanted to check it, I just want to double check and make sure that all these points are on here. And it doesn't say what form I have to have it in, so I don't even have to multiply it out. And I'm going to look now at my table. I should see the point negative 1, 0, which we do. I should see the point 1, 0. And I should also see the point 2, 3. And I do, so that's correct. All right, so now you guys are going to do this problem on your own. Same kind of thing. 
You know the x-intercepts, and then you know another point, so you should be able to find out what A is. That's part of your Ed puzzle. Number three, use finite differences to determine the degree of the polynomial function that fits the data. Then use technology to find the polynomial function. All right, this just depends on how you like to look at the data. I think I'll go horizontally. So I've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And got my y values are 0, 0, 40, 168. 432 and 880. So now I have to look at those finite differences. So my first one, that's 0, going up 40, going up uh, 128, going up, grab a calculator, can't make any careless mistakes on this, that's 264. And then this, I'm going up 448. So it's not linear. I look at my second differences. That's 40. That's going to be 88. That's going to be 136. And that's going to be 178. All right. So that did not work. So my first differences didn't work. Second differences didn't work. Let's try the third. So that's going up 48, that's going up 48, good so far, and that's going up 42, let's see here. So it's not going to be cubic, um, I would then have to keep going on that. Let's say that that was 48, though. Did I have a mistake somewhere? Where is it? It has to work. Carson, where is it? Uh, did I? Right here? 880 minus 432, 448. Thank you. So that's 448, that's 184, and that's 48. Wonderful. Okay, that's what was supposed to happen. All right, so our third differences then are the same. So now it's a cubic function. Now the easiest way for me to come up to the, with a cubic function in this case um, I do have one of my zeros. I ha actually, I have two of my x-intercepts. I have two zeros. But I can make the calculator do this for me by going under Stat, Edit, and I'm just going to put in all my x's. And then I'm going to go over here and put in all my y's. Remember, if I want to see these points, I'm going to have to turn on my stat plot. And then I can do a zoom stat to be able to see the points. So there are the points, and I have some other stuff in there for y equals. Go into y equals and clear this out. Okay, so now if I want to come up with my equation then, I'm going to go to stat, calculate, and I'm going to go down to a cubic regression, and I'm going to calculate it. If I want to store it while I'm at it, I can go to VARS, Y VARS. I'm going to store it into Y1, and I'm going to calculate it. And there it is. It's a perfectly cubic function because all those third differences were the same. And so now when I hit graph, it's going to go right through it perfectly. And I'm just going to grab that equation now. I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to go back here again. The calculator sometimes tries to round and it just makes it worse. Okay, so this is going to be my cubic in general form. It's all multiplied out for me even. 
So it's y equals 1x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. And that's going to be the cubic right there. Alright, so I'll have you guys try number 4 to come up with that regression in the Ed Puzzle. Okay, number 5. The table shows the population Y of bacteria after X hours. Find a polynomial model for the data for the first 4.5 hours. Use the model to estimate the population level of the bacteria in thousands after day one. Okay, so I'm going to check to make sure these are evenly spaced. They are not evenly spaced. So therefore, I can't use my finite differences. I'm just going to have to put this in and take a look at it and try to figure out which one is the best model. So if they're not evenly spaced, we cannot use the finite differences. So I'm just typing these in. And it's not always obvious from looking at the graph. I have my stat plots on. So I can do my zoom stat and take a look at it. Oh, there's my old graph. Okay, so I'm going to go in here, get rid of that. I still don't like how this is connecting these. I guess that's all right. All right, let's do a zoom stat one more time. Okay, so there are points, and it's, it's connecting my points. I must have it set to do that. Um, so this kind of looks cubic or quart, uh, quadratic or even quartic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate, first of all, the quadratic regression. And I'm just going to calculate it and look at my R squared. R squared for a quadratic is 0 0.998. Uh, so that's for a quadratic. I'm trying to find the best model for it. So now I'm going to do a stat, calculate, see how good a cubic is. And the cubic, oh, okay, so it's saying r squared is 1 there. These are basically zeros when we see that. So it's saying here that this would be a good model, that it's y equals 1 is the coefficient of x cubed. This means 0 because this is 0 0.000, 10 zeros with 205, so that's 0. So that's 0, that's 0, and then it's just plus 5. Okay, I can type that in myself. So I go to y equals, I'm going to put in x cubed plus 5, graph it. Yep, and that's a nice accurate graph. Okay, so there we go. So find a polynomial model for the data for the first 4.5 hours. We've got it. And because it's only for the first 4.5 hours, I'm going to have to say that t has to be in between 0 and 4.5 hours. Use the model to estimate the population level of the bacteria in thousands after one day. Okay, so this is just showing me for the first 4.5, but it's saying that it works for any number. So I'm going to do second trace calculate. If it's one day, then I want to plug in 24 hours. This is not going to work, and that's because of my window. So I have to go to my window. I have to extend it so I can check it. And so now when I check it, second trace, calculate a value when x equals 24 hours, and I get 13829. And we have to remember that this is the number of bacteria in thousands. So I would have to add on thousand to this. So it would be 13,829,000 bacteria based on this model. Okay? We really don't need this because it's saying that it works beyond 4.5.